the serve. How many times are you going out and you're practicing your serves? If you're going out and you're practicing your serves, how many times are you doing this with purpose? Warming up properly, setting targets, getting enough repetitions out, and making sure that you're only ingraining really good habits. So that is what it's all about in today's video, how to get the most out of your serving session. I think one of the most important things to have a successful serving session is to be warmed up. Now, I do see a lot of people going out and yes, they're waiting for their partner or whatever it is, and they're just going out there and they're just hitting a couple of serves. And a lot of times they do that without zero warm up. Maybe you've never had shoulder issues, then yay, good for you. I actually had to end my career because of shoulder issues. So when I'm serving now, I'm really diligent in warming up. So here are a couple of ways that you can prepare your arm and your shoulder for your serving session. The first thing that I like to prepare with is my pull rope. And I can get you some money off of the ADV Fitness Kit that has a pull rope with a convenient hook, carabiner. So you can just fix that to any fence, the net post, wherever. And of course, there's multiple ways to prepare. So you can just start with regular outward rotations. And of course, I'm switching. I have my internal rotation. But I think what's super important is to warm up everything that's above shoulder. A really good one for that is just your triceps extension. So you're just warming this up. Three sets of 15. There's plenty of things online that you can find to warm up with that pull rope, but I would make it a part of your warm up. Next stage in the warm up can be simple shadow swings. So you're just running through your motion there, just loosely holding the racket and just swinging. If you want to add some more weight, use two rackets. Very simple, next progression. Very simple to do, everybody can do it. Next step to warm up, just go into no man's land, no woman's land and serve from there with a half motion. And that is when you start making impact with the ball, of course. As you can see, I'm somewhere in no woman's land, choking up on the racket even. I'm just gently hitting the ball. No pace yet. You know, 10, 15 balls. Just gives you the rhythm. And I think also that part is where I like to really switch off of everything that happens around me and I'm focusing on my serve. To me, that's almost a mental trigger. Okay, it's serving time. Well, if you think that now it's time to serve, you are wrong. Let's talk about targets. All right, so depending on where you are in your development as a tennis player, you have more or less control over the direction of your serve. So there's a couple of ways on how you can set up your targets. You can simply go with your cones, three targets. So this is just to the T, body, and then wide. And of course, you can use ball pyramids, you can use ball cans, you can even put another racket there, just to visually have something to focus on. The other thing that you can do is, you can divide the service box in thirds. So you have a wide serve, you have a middle serve, and you have your T serve. So one board, on the wide serve on the deuce if you're a right-hander. I deliberately don't put my cones here because even though I'm hitting the target, I'm also hitting it right into my opponent's strike zone. So what I actually wanna do with my wide slice serve on the deuce is to get it a little shorter. And a really good wide serve is one that of course bounces in the box and then cuts both singles line and doubles line before it passes the baseline. That's the sign of a really good serve out wide. And you see that all the time in the pros, they actually take some pace off to achieve that. They add a lot more spin, of course. So that is one way to divvy it up. And there's of course one more. 
If you're a little newer to tennis and you're still really working on getting the serve in, I would suggest that you give yourself bigger areas, bigger targets. So, so at least that you're starting to work on, this is a T-serve, it goes more onto a right-hander's forehand, or of course, if you have a lefty, you want to hit their backhands, or you're going wide. So you're just divvying up the service box into two areas instead of three. Okay, fantastic. We have warmed up, we've set out our targets, let's talk about the serve itself. This is not the most extensive technique video, but I do want to make this point. You will only serve well if you do the right things in the very beginning of the serve, meaning your stance, your grip, and the toss. So let's go over quickly what I would love to see when you're serving, that you're paying attention to those details. As one of my coaches said, every shot is like a word that you write. If you get the first letter wrong, it doesn't matter what you do for the rest of the word, it's misspelled. So let's make sure that we spell serve right. Yeah, I think that works as an analogy. Number one, continental grip. But I'm actually also making a video that's coming out next week, how to transition from a frying pan grip to your continental grip because that is the number one reason that will prevent you from becoming a really good server. So it's worth spending the effort and yes, the frustration to make that switch. But number one, you want to have your continental grip. And I have a video on that, it's linked down below. Number two, your serve position. So let's assume you have the right grip. The way that you want to stand as a right-hander, and of course you mirror image that for a lefty is, you're facing the net sideways. Your left hip, your left shoulder point towards the box that you're going to serve into. The tip of your left foot points towards the doubles alley or even the net post. And your right leg is about shoulder width behind, slightly staggered behind you. This should be your position before you serve. So this is your position before you serve. Go through a checklist. Tip of my left foot, doubles alley. Yep, got my grip, sideways. All right, I'm ready to go. Now the next part, of course, is the toss. The toss, the dreadful toss. Where should your toss be? Well, depends on what kind of serve you want to hit. Good players can serve all three serves slice, flat, and kick with one toss. You don't see it at world class level that somebody is tossing the ball way far to their right to hit a slice serve and way far over to their left if they want to hit a kick serve. Now, for us mere mortals, I am always teaching an acceptable area. So let's go over that. So in terms of how far out the ball should be is by virtue of you bringing your left arm up, pointing towards the net, your ball, your toss will be inside the court. So to my mind, you don't have to toss it any further into the court. It will be inside the court if you release the ball where you're supposed to release it, which is between eye level and top of your head. So that's number one. When the ball comes down, if you were to let it come down, so we're tossing, that's actually an acceptable toss for a recreational player. Anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half inside the court. If it's any further and you feel that you have to lean before your racket is above your shoulder, let the ball come down. Do over, start over. And that is a really, really important thing. When you're practicing, let bat tosses come down. In a match, I totally get it. After you miss toss the ball at some point, they're gonna go like, oh, can you get the freaking serve in? Well, okay, then I'm gonna serve and I'm gonna hit anything terrible that's yellow and flying because it's, yeah, it's kind of frustrating for me and for them. But in practices, be picky. Only good tosses. Now, in terms of location where I'm tossing the ball, to me, it's acceptable for a flat and for a slice serve, if you had a clock, you have a clock face here, this is your 12 o'clock, I find it acceptable to hit from 12.30 
to about one, 12 to one in that area. Again, if you're going too far out to let's say a two o'clock, you're gonna end up side arming it. And that's of course not what you wanna do. If it's too far over your left shoulder, this would be an 1130, that's a kick serve. If you're in your development, that you are hitting kick serves, that would be acceptable for a kick serve. Okay, we're finally okay. ready to serve, let's do it. Okay, what I wanna do is, I start with second serves. I'm not gonna go out there, even if I'm warmed up, and start nailing and bombing for serves. That's another thing that I see a whole lot, that people go out and they hit first serves only, and then they wander in matches, well, why is my second serve not reliable? Well, duh, because I never practiced it. So start with your second serves. A player is only as good as her second serve. And because it's me and I had shoulder issues, I'm starting really, really slow. So variations that you can do, how do I use my targets? You can go walking through your targets. I start with 10 serves to the T, 10 serves to the body, 10 serves wide, or two, two, and two. And later when you warmed up your serve, of course, you can walk through the targets, go first serve. If you make your first serve, you move on to the next target. If you miss your first serve, you hit a second serve. And only when you're making that, of course, are you moving on to your next target. So that's up to you, have fun with that, but make sure that you have a purpose when you're coming out there for your serves, because it's kind of important that we get that thing in. If you like my videos, go ahead and subscribe, maybe recommend my channel to your friends, click that bell sign, and that way you know when I'm putting out new content. Also, you can sign up on my website, micababble.com for my newsletter. You can follow me on Instagram, and I'm sure I'll catch you on one of those channels.